When we rotate a 2D shape, we can move it in one of two directions. We could go in this direction here, which we call clockwise. This is because it follows the same direction as the hands on a clock. Or we could go in the opposite direction, which is this way, and since that's the opposite to the way the hands on a clock move, we call that one anti-clockwise. For this video, we're going to look at rotating a shape by either 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Since one full turn is 360 degrees, 180 degrees will be half a turn, and 90 degrees will be one quarter of a turn. So if we were to rotate this shape 90 degrees clockwise, it would go 90 degrees or one quarter of a turn in the direction that a clock hand moves. So it would look something like this. Instead, if we were to go 90 degrees anti-clockwise, it would go one quarter of a turn in the opposite direction. So it would look like this. For 180 degrees, we can actually look at both directions at the same time. So for the left shape, we'll do 180 degrees anti-clockwise and the right one 180 degrees clockwise. And 180 degrees is half a turn. Notice how both of these shapes end up in the same place. This means that when we rotate by 180 degrees, we don't actually need to give a direction at all. We can just say 180 degrees and lose the clockwise or the anti-clockwise. Sometimes you may be given a shape and asked to rotate it around a particular point. So for this question, it says rotate shape A 180 degrees about the point P. To do a question like this, I'd use a piece of tracing paper. First of all, trace around the shape that you're going to rotate, and then take a pencil and place it firmly onto the point you're rotating around. So we'll place a pencil on the point P here. Then with this firmly pressed in place, turn your tracing paper the amount of degrees you've been asked to. So for this one, it's 180 degrees, so that's one half a turn. And remember, it doesn't matter if I go clockwise or anti-clockwise for this one. So I'm going to go half a turn clockwise. When you turn it, you'll find that the final shape needs to end up here. So we lift off the tracing paper and draw the shape here. What about if the question had said to rotate this shape 90 degrees clockwise? Well, we do exactly the same thing. We trace around the shape, then we take a pencil and place it on the point we're rotating around, but we're going to go 90 degrees clockwise this time. So one quarter of a turn in the direction that the hands on a clock move. So with the pencil firmly pressed down, we take the tracing paper and turn it one quarter of a turn in that direction. Your final shape will end up here. So we remove the tracing paper and draw the shape there. And of course, it could have said to rotate it 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Once again, we trace around the shape, place the pencil onto the point P, and then we'll turn it one quarter of a turn, but anti-clockwise, so in the opposite direction this time. The final shape will end up here. We remove the tracing paper and draw the shape in that position. More often than not, you'll have to do a question like this on a coordinate axis. The question might be worded as follows. Rotate shape A 90 degrees clockwise about the origin, label the image B. Once again, we'll start with a piece of tracing paper. We'll trace around the shape, and then we need to place the pencil at the point we're rotating around. Now this time it hasn't been marked onto the grid, we're going to have to mark it on ourselves. We've been told in the wording of the question it's about the origin. The origin is the point zero, 00, so we mark on that point ourselves. Then we place the pencil on this point and begin to turn the shape. This one's 90 degrees clockwise, so one quarter of a turn in the same direction that the hands on a clock move, so this way. We can then lift off the tracing paper and draw the shape in this place. This question says to label the image B, so let's write a B onto the shape. Now let's try another one. So we've got shape C this time, and it says rotate shape C 180 degrees about negative 3, 1 and label the image D. So let's take our tracing paper and trace around the shape C. And then we're going to need to mark on this point we're rotating around. This time we've been given the point negative 3, 1. So we're going to mark a cross at negative 3, 1. So we place a pencil onto this cross, and we're going 180 degrees, so one half a turn. And again, it doesn't matter in which direction we move, so we just turn this round half a turn, and you'll see that shape C will map to here. This one says to label the image D, so let's write a D onto that shape. Sometimes in an exam question, a rotation will have already been done for you, and you need to describe it. So here we have several rotations, and the question will likely be worded as follows. Describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A to shape B. So in this question it says describe the single transformation. Obviously this video is about rotations, but there are four different choices for transformations. You need to check is it a rotation, reflection, translation, or enlargement. And obviously in this video the answer is a rotation, so we'll write that down, and this gets you one mark for writing the correct transformation. Then we need to give two more bits of information. We need to describe how many degrees the shape was rotated. This is quite easy to work out with tracing paper. 
So take your tracing paper and trace around the first shape, which is shape A. Then we turn the tracing paper until it fits perfectly on shape B. So I'm going to go one quarter of a turn first of all and see if it fits onto that shape, and it doesn't, so I'll go another quarter, which is a half a turn, and it fits. One half a turn is 180 degrees, so I write down 180 degrees. And remember, for 180, you don't need to say clockwise or anti-clockwise. Next is the hardest part. We need to find the point it was rotated around. This is called the center of rotation. To find the center of rotation, we'll put the tracing paper back to how we started, and we're going to place our pencil on a point where we think the center of rotation might be. So I'm going to say it could be here. We then turn the tracing paper around, half a turn, 180 degrees, and we hope that it maps onto shape B. So let's try this and see what happens. When we turn this one around this point, it doesn't land onto the shape, which means the center of rotation we've selected is incorrect. So we're going to have to try a different point. So I'm now going to try this point down here. If I turn it around half a turn and hope that it lands on shape B, but unfortunately it doesn't. So we'll go back and try again. Now let's try this point here. If I turn this round 180 degrees half a turn, this time it does land perfectly onto shape B, which means this must be the center of rotation. You can see its coordinates are 3 on the x-axis and 4 on the y-axis. So we can complete our description of the transformation now by saying it's about the point 3, 4. Now there is a way of finding the center of rotation that's quite long and complicated. In most cases you'll find it much quicker just by guessing a few points. It might take you a few goes to find the actual answer, but it is quite a quick method with some practice. Let's try this for shape C and D. So this question says, describe fully the single transformation that maps shape C to shape D. So we're going to do exactly the same steps as we did before. We're describing a single transformation, and we know in this video that it's going to be a rotation, so we write down rotation. This gets us one mark. Then we need to decide how many degrees it's gone. So we're going to trace the shape. Shape C is the one we're starting with, and we're going to turn it until it fits onto shape D. This one I need to turn one quarter of a turn in this direction, which is the opposite way a clock goes, so that'll be anti-clockwise. So I can write down that this was rotated 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Then we'll return the tracing paper to its original position and try and find this center of rotation. Remember, it might take you a few goes. So I'm going to place my pencil here first of all and see if it lands onto shape D. I turn it one quarter of a turn and unfortunately it doesn't. So I'll go back and try a different place. Next I'll try here. So we'll go one quarter of a turn anti-clockwise and it still doesn't match, but it looks like I'm getting closer. Next I'm going to try this point here. And if I go one quarter of a turn anti-clockwise, this time it does fit onto the shape. So I found the center of rotation, it's actually at zero, zero, or the origin. So we would say that this is about zero, zero. And let's try the final question. So we're going to describe fully the single transformation that maps shape E onto shape F. Exactly the same process as before. There's a single transformation, which we know in this video is a rotation. Then we're going to trace the shape, and we're starting with shape E onto shape F, so we should trace shape E. Then we turn the tracing paper so that it fits onto shape F. This time I need to go one quarter of a turn in a clockwise direction, so it must be 90 degrees clockwise. Now let's return the tracing paper back to shape E, and we'll try and find the center of rotation. It might take a few goes, so let's try this point here first of all, and we're going to turn it one quarter of a turn clockwise, and it doesn't quite fit, but it is quite close already. So let's go ahead and try this point instead. And if we go one quarter of a turn in a clockwise direction, it does fit. So this must be the center of rotation. This one has x coordinate six and y coordinate negative five. So we'd say it's about the point six, negative five. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not go and try the exam questions in this video's description.